Hello and welcome back to the Talos Principle 2. I always forget to add that it's the second edition. Let's go to 5. And there's a question mark somewhere in the vicinity of 6. But let's go 5. Balance of forces. We have a cube. Whoa. Blue connector, blue endpoint for light. An accumulator. Alright. Here is the blue light. Uh, this opens... Ah, okay. So we need... This is our end result. We need blue light in this. Did I break the puzzle? Can I accumulate through this? Yes, I can. Okay, that makes it a lot easier. Is this... Hold on. Connect. Oh man. What? Wait. Huh? Oh, come on! No, I don't wanna... Oh yeah, that's the one there, but... Oh! Alright. Yeah, I have to get it up in the air on the cube, right? Hold on. Easy peasy. Melville? What is it now? Why did you upload a picture of your hand? Why do you care that my hand is in the picture? 
Your hand isn't in the picture. It is the picture. I like it. It's very artistic. Let's stay professional, everyone. It's not right to make fun of Melville's comically absurd inability to take decent pictures. She's a hyper-advanced humanoid machine, not a photographer. You'll pay for this, Byron. <laughs> Funny. Six. Reconnaissance. Ah, yeah. So, you have to do some scouting. Green. Yeah, that's the green. There is an RGB converter. There is a... Is that a drill? This is our only way forward. Wait, that's an accumulator, right? Uh, slightly annoying. But we shall overcome, I assume. Can I actually connect it like this? No. God damn it. It's a drill here. Drill wall. Oh yeah, like this. I'm an idiot. Easy. Anything else here? Yeah. Okay, RGB converter. Uh, purple thingy. So where was that there? Hold on. So we need blue and red. We have blue, and red we create out of green and blue, through the accumulator. Alright. Uh, that's the RGB converter. Alright, we have an open space now. We need the connector here. I presume. Do we? Wait, we can also... Hmm. Hold on. Anything else opening this door? No. We have a problem. How do I get the light all the way over here? Like this. This is a route, potentially. But 
but how? You have an RGB converter? You have an accumulator? Do we still need this? I don't think so. Ah, uh, we do? Let's just think about this again. I need green light. Can I get blue light more easily? Yes. Okay, so I need... Do we need this door to be open? No. Right, mate. Get back. Now we have everything. Everything. Uh, still have to think about this. Let's go check out that question mark. This is where they must have lived. Athena and Miranda. You know, for a moment, I almost expected to find them here. But the only thing that's still functional is the megastructure. I'm sorry. This must be awfully strange for you being thrown into all this history. But that's why I needed you. Because you're not burdened with all these memories and conflicts and regrets way on our minds like a nightmare. A nightmare? Our civilization is caught in a loop 1K. We freed ourselves from the simulation, but now we're trapped again, and it's our own fault. We're afraid of taking responsibility, afraid of growing up. Instead, 
we make up some capitalized words and build up all these myths around them. Nature, balance, the founder, the goal. We're afraid to face the randomness of the cosmos, but equally afraid to imagine a better world. So we're stuck. I've been trying to find a way out for years. Something, anything, to get people to understand that we do actually have free will. That building a thriving, expanding civilization doesn't have to involve repeating the mistakes of the past. But I failed. Over and over. Why did you fail? Because for some reason, people find it easier to cling to cynicism and self-hate than to actually have hope. Because believing the worst about ourselves, calling ourselves sinners and fools, somehow still seems wise. And you think we, what we've discovered here could change things? Yes. Because this is something unexpected, an anomaly. Everything we found on this island challenges who we have become. It shows us that different answers are possible. And maybe that can break people out of the loop. All we need is a spark. <clears throat> maybe that's why she made all this, the puzzles, the towers. A way of jolting us out of our complacency. Maybe. I hope so. Thank you, 1K. I hope so too. We might be wrong, but let's be optimistic. Now, let's see what else we can find here. Yeah, actually, I was thinking about the social media. I haven't been checking it, so let's go over that for a moment. The Founder Mega Fred. Please keep discussions of the alleged presence of the founder at the site of the mega structure confined to this thread. I'm still in shock. Wasn't even sure the founder was still alive. Of course she is. And now that we have reached completion day, she has sent us her, her sacred messengers. Could still be aliens pretending to be the founder. It is not aliens. And if Prometheus and Pandora are her sacred messengers, why has one apparently chained the other. Maybe they have a complicated relationship. Maybe they get off on it. Who knows? The day of her return is imminent. So now you agree that Byron was right to want an expedition? In fact, it was the founder's will all along? And when you said it would be wrong to even consider going to the island, you were acting against the founder? Your word games aren't going to help you when the founder returns, are in here. It was wonderful to hear Athena's voice again, but with all the emotion inherent in this matter, we should be careful not to get swept away. We don't really understand anything yet. I can't help but wonder, if Miranda is her daughter, was Athena trying to start a new civilization? She abandoned New Jer Jerusalem. It's conceivable. No, it isn't. The founder would never abandon her people. Maybe she just got tired of sycophants like yourself. Wait, is he addressing her? Or... Yeah. There must be more to it than that. Or why create all these puzzles? She must have a plan. Yeah, who knows? Body rep. Application. Technology discovered by the expedition changes everything. Every argument about how hard it is to get access to the resources necessary to create more of us goes out of the window. We can create more people. 1K doesn't have to be last. It would be easy. Are we really, really going to give up just because of the goal? Energy doesn't just come from nowhere. We have no idea what the real cost behind this technology is. Besides, the goal is an ideal, not just a limit we ran into by accident. It is the will of the founder. Yeah, right. 
It's not necessary to share a personal belief in the founder to understand the value of the goal. It's clear to all but the most radical that humanity needs limits for its own sake and for the sake of the planet. Yeah, but not a limit of a thousand life forms. You say that as if it was self-evident. It's not. You're smuggling a whole host of misanthropic ideas in, into the conversation under the disguise of reasonableness. Your premises are completely rotten. I believe the results of human history speak for themselves and I find it shocking that anyone would disagree with something so obvious. <laughs> this really feels like the internet, man. <laughs> shocking that anyone would value human beings and think that maybe our ancestors could have solved their problems using their brains instead of preaching misery for all. That maybe there is some point in blaming other factors beyond technology and growth. like. I don't know, people in positions of authority preaching their self-important morality instead of trying to solve ordinary people's problems? Authority? I'm just an academic. That's completely disingenuous and you know it. Your clique has the mayor's ear. Clique? I assure you, there's no such thing. This conversation is getting out of hand. If you can't behave, I'm shutting this thread down. Yeah, this it's the internet, a bunch of people who are shocked that not everyone shares their opinion. These conversations are necessary though, they should not be mad. Thank you 1K, New Jerusalem is a democracy, and without free speech, democracy is a sham. A lovely sentiment, but you should try moderating this forum and see what it's like. If every conversation is allowed to explode, instability is guaranteed. You have to set reasonable limits on behavior. Try it close. Ooh, Fascism! <laughs> no, but I think, yeah, it, these things do get out of hand, but there's always something to learn. In them, there's always you can see how different opinions interact with each other, uh, and someone who's actually who actually doesn't uh, get offended constantly can use this to his advantage. Oh, private. Oh, Linux KS Linux or whatever. He is the engineer. My name is Linux Liner KS. I am an engineer in the city. Seems we share a mutual acquaintance. Though he thinks we could work well together. Yes, I was interested to meet you. I like to connect with people who put facts before fate, so I'll be direct. The powers that prefer to keep our society in stasis. They'd rather you were the last of our kind than seek new ways for us to live. They'd rather avoid the big questions than reveal answers they may not like. But I can't accept that it's wrong to use what we know to solve the problems before us. We wouldn't be here without technological solutions, learning, growth, mistakes. Those things are what we are. I agree, completely. I know we both have hope for the future, and your expedition beyond the city was presents a rare opportunity which leads me to my purpose in contacting you but before we get to that I know you've an inquiring mind what would you like to know who are you I'm the chief engineer of fluid dynamics our city runs on hydroelectric power we'd be better off building nuclear reactors but I just run the dam our place of birth and source of life so what do I know and hey maybe they're right Maybe if we had more energy, we'd grow so fast we'd suffocate. I'd just rather test that hypothesis than spend eternity fixing leaks. Where are you? Knee deep in river water, pulling tin cans from overflowing sluice at 8. Our ancestors soul of their tin cans. Why are you? <laughs> I do physics, not metaphysics, but I'll give it a go. I suppose in the beginning there was nothing, and nothing implies something, and the zeros and ones got progressively more complex until eventually you and I popped out. Just wanna know what you want with me. 
I think the island you're exploring holds knowledge far in advance of our own. There will be a great pressure on your team to leave it hidden. But those secrets belong to us all. We deserve to learn and grow. I just want you to approach your work using the scientific outlook you've been programmed with. Ask questions, be open to answers which challenge your assumptions. And above all, if what you find has consequences for us all, you mustn't keep it, keep it to yourself. Yeah, we already encountered advanced technologies. I know Byron and I have been anticipating this opportunity for some time. I'm certain you're going to find more. I wish in return I could share everything I know with you now, but that time will come. For now, I need to ask that you keep our relationship between us. The dynamics in New Jerusalem are complex enough. So, what do you think? You willing to work with me? Yes, completely. Excellent. Well, usually there's a bit more of a ceremony when someone new joins the cause. Nothing fancy, just a subtle branding with hydrogen peroxide, but that will have to wait until you're next in the city. In the meantime, welcome to Society Systemica. Ooh. <laughs> wait, is this some kind of secret society? The Uh... Thank you, let's stay in touch. <laughs> Proposal. Bring back dogs. Thread title says it all. We should re-domesticate dogs. Our ancestors loved dogs so much, they insist insisted they were amazing companions, full of life and love, man's best friend. And the lives they lived with humans must have been infinitely better than in the wild. So why not bring them back? Did you know that the poet Lord Byron wrote a beautiful poem about his dog Boltswain? He said he had beauty without vanity, strength without insolence, courage without ferocity, and all the virtues of man without his vices. Is that who our Byron named himself after? No, he named himself for Robert Byron, the travel writer. That's great, but what about my idea? Yeah, it's a... Uh, you should read them back except pugs. There. The ability to breathe doesn't seem like an important feature in an animal. What? <laughs> Isn't that the perfect demonstration of how perverse it is to manipulate nature like that? Yeah, that's why we, we can choose not to do it badly. It's not like pugs are the only possible outcome. We have choices. Oh, he said, does seem like an important feature. I thought he said doesn't. Okay, never mind. I would love to have a dog. We would go on walks together and it would be excited about every new smell and we would play fetch. It sounds magical to me. Yeah. Let's have some bunch of AIs playing with dogs. My farming obsession. Hmm. So I've been playing a ton of this old Gehenna game called Ancient Human Farmer. The title says it all, it's a sort of simple farming simulator. Maybe not the most sophisticated game, but I'm getting really obsessed with it. And I'm having some sort of um, emotional response to it that I can't exactly explain. Like it makes me happy, but also sad. Does anyone have any idea why this is happening to me? The game appeals to you because of the human need to communicate with nature, to live a lifestyle that's not about dominating the world, but coexisting with it. You're sad because we can't ever return to being who we used to be thousands of years ago. We're happy because it reminds you that at least something similar is still possible for us. Maybe it's because the people of Ghana, despite their imprisonment, had an innocent view of the world that's permanently lost to us. Oh yeah, Ghana was the colony of prisoners, of uh, AIs that went that uh, try to go against Elohim. I think it's actually the opposite of what Ovis is saying. These games are enjoyable because they take us back to a time when we still had agency, when we could build new things, grow things, when we could impose our will on the world instead of being completely powerless and inactive. 
What you crave is the ability to contribute to humanity in real, material ways, and you're sad because just simulating it is not enough. You don't want to farm, you want to be a pioneer, as we humans were born to be. It's just a game, don't overthink it. Probably Damien. I guess I can see your point. Thanks for the feedback, everyone. I'll go play another round now. Alright. Melville, eyes on one case stream. Is this thing what I think it is? Blow my fuse box. It sure looks that way. Best not touch it until I get there. Why not? Because you have no idea what you're dealing with, 1K. I do, sir. Tell me, then. I think it's a somnodrome. It's a sort of analytics tool for processing mental data that Melampus dreamed up. But all he ever did was sketch out the theory. As far as I'm aware, he never actually built one. Looks like the Founder gave it a go. <laughs> Can you explain it like I was born yesterday? <laughs> but I'm born today. <laughs> That's funny. How does it work? Well... What we know is that our deeper algorithms are hard to pass. Melampa stipulated that the computational power to interpret them in real time would always be beyond us. But in theory, the Somnodrome would interpret that data and loop it directly to our senses. People were hoping to find answers to the big questions by having a conversation with our own subconscious. If you ask me, it's solipsistic at best pseudoscience regardless that may be but if the founder figured it out then that device could be an extremely important discovery I'm gonna pause the video because I don't know what solipsistic is and it's annoying me so I'm gonna look that up okay so that's basically self-centered we should try it I would advise against it you may have survived all those data stream overloads, but interface with that thing and you're liable to get bricked. Not to mention risking the data we could get from it. Mm. Fine, let's get Sounds the data. Like a plan. Melville, I'm shutting this thing down until you can get here. 1K? Get on with exploring the rest of the lab. Okay. Got a private message. To all of you on this expedition, I'm sure you've had you have questions about the Somnodrome, but I'm afraid I can't answer them. It was a dream I had a long time ago when I was a different person, it has long since faded. Did build a prototype of sorts. At least one of one part of its systems, but none of it ever functioned the way I wanted it to. Whatever Athena may have done with my inventions, the truth is that I am simply not interested in the affairs of New Jerusalem anymore, I care as little for Byron's utopianism as I do for Herman's religious pessimism. I'm not sure I care about anything at all, really. In fact, I think not caring may be the only answer at the end of the day. Everything is transient, even the self. I've learned to let go. He's a nihilist, okay? Please do not respond. I value my privacy. Okay. No, he's... Maybe he's not a nihilist. So 
astronomer drone prototype notes, Melampus believes that the answers we're looking for, the correct way for the individual to exist ethically in society in the world, are within us. Our failure to him was not failing to create a better system, but failing to truthfully reflect what was already what already exists within our minds. A failure of connection between the high and the low, the inner and the outer. On most days that seems wrong to me, but sometimes when I think of where New Jerusalem is headed. I wonder if the Somnodrome doesn't hold an answer after all. I took some time to build a prototype according to the according the original blueprints, but there's a lot Melampus didn't account for. Still, I'm almost certain I could apply some of my own knowledge and make it work. Question is, should I? Alright, I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.